Goblin launch detected. Uh-oh. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. If you're looking for cards in the US, look no further as you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA to get you 5% off anything on the site. You can also use the promo code MTGMUDSTA for 5% off your orders from Face to Face Games, Canada's largest Magic the Gathering store, with qualified orders getting free shipping Canada wide. And if you just want to help out the channel, you can always consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month and join the generic Goblin Gang. Hey gang and welcome back. Today's video was taken from my stream where we did the pre-con games, and I'm joined by Maximus, Mika, and Kevin. Thanks once again to Face to Face for sending these decks, and let's get into the game. As this was originally streamed, we didn't show opening hands, and Maximus wins the die roll and starts us off. He plays a swamp. Mika plays a forest and casts a turn one soul ring. Kevin has a tap path of ancestry. I just play command tower and pass. Maximus plays an island, passing turn. Mika plays 3 for the adventured half of Beanstalk Giant, casting Fertilid Footsteps. He finds a basic mountain to field, tapped. This lets him play his land for turn, a Castle Emberith, untapped, and he passes turn. Kevin also has a mountain, and casts an Izzet Signet. I correct the naming issue with Furcrag, thanks to chat pointing it out, and draw. I then play a Plains, and cast Talisman of Hierarchy. Maximus plays a Swamp, and taps 3 for a Woe Strider, making a Goat Token. Surprisingly, the deck doesn't actually come with one. Thankfully, we have a thematically appropriate token to use instead. Mika draws a Forest for turn, and plays it, and has 6 mana on turn 3. He taps enough for his commander, Faldorn, and using his remaining mana, casts Chaos Wand. Kevin has a Mountain for turn, and then casts a Talisman of Creativity. Once that's resolved, he casts a Burnished Heart and passes turn. I play a Plains and bring out the 3-drop that is Harper Recruit and ship the turn. Maximus plays an Island and heads at me with the Woe Strider. In his second main phase, he suspends a Nihilith with 7 time counters and passes. Mika draws, and in his main phase, activates the Chaos Wand and targets Kevin. Kevin reveals until he hits Curse of the Swine, which Mika casts, putting X into the zero as if he has a choice, and gets a Wolf Token from Faldorn. With the spell hitting the graveyard, Maximus removes a time counter from his suspended creature. Faldorn then heads at Maximus, who blocks with the Goat Token and sacrifices it before damage to scry one. Mika then foretells a card, and passes. Kevin just draws, and passes turn. I have a Swamp for turn, and cast Archpriest of Iona. I then bring out Nylea Dionese, and look at my top card. I go to combat, and swing the Harper at Mika. This triggers his ability on attack, and I reveal Changeling Outcast, and just all gold main, which both go to my hand. He then takes the hit, and I pass turn. At the end of my turn, Maximus asks if I'll take a hit from the Woe Strider if he doesn't attack me the next turn, and I agree. On his upkeep, he removes a time counter, and then plays a swamp for turn, and then casts his commander, Captain Nagathrod. As his horrors now have menace, he decides to go up Mika for three and upon connecting, Mika gets milled for 3. This downticks the Nihilith by 3 more suspend counters, and at the end of the turn, the captain triggers and brings back a Bone Crusher Giant. He then, and I quote, pees the T. Mika untaps and draws. He plays a tap Spine Rock Knoll, hiding away one of his top 4 cards. He just passes after that. At the end of turn, Kevin sacrifices the Burnished Heart to go and find 2 islands to put to field. Kevin has a death kiss for his turn, trying to incentivize his opponents to beat each other up, and pass his turn. I untap, and draw. I look at my top card, and play a planes. I then cast a changeling outcast, and have a full party now. 
Moving to combat, I get a trigger from Nalia, putting a plus one plus one counter onto all of my creatures, and they gain death touch. I also give the Archpriest trigger to itself, and then swing it at Mika and the Harper at Maximus. Mika responds before damage, casting for the Fortel cost a delayed blast fireball, dealing 5 damage to all of his opponents and their creatures. This also gives him a wolf token. I do get to resolve my harbor trigger and keep a Dire Fleet Ravager. With stuff hitting the graveyard, Maximus is able to remove the last remaining time counters and cast the spell. I then take one from the Talisman in my second main phase to help cast a Dire Fleet Ravager and cut everyone's life total by a third and pass. Maximus tells me that he's sorry my party ended abruptly and goes to combat. He swings the Nihilith at me and Captain Tentacle Face at Kevin. We both take the hits and I mill four and Kevin mills three as they connect. Maximus then casts from the Catacombs in the second main phase and he takes the Death Kiss from Kevin's graveyard and gets to take the initiative, exploring the Undercity and going into the secret entrance, which lets him find a basic to the hand and shuffles up. He finds an island and plays it. He then moves to the end step and steals the Valiant Changeling that I'd milled with his Captain Trigger. Mika asks what cards are in hand, which telegraphs his upcoming Jeska's will. Since his commander's out, he exiles his top three and gains five red mana as it resolves. He first casts a Terramore from Exile, which sadly doesn't get rebound. He finds a land to put to field and puts the spell to his graveyard. He then drops a Primeval Bounty and laments his sequencing. He at least does get two wolf tokens regardless of the order he casts them in. He swings a wolf token at Kevin and I, and we each take four because of the death kiss on Maximus's side of the board, and with nothing else, he passes. Kevin has a Chaos Dragon in his main phase, and scries one from the Path of Ancestry. He moves to combat, and his opponents each roll a die to see who the dragon can attack. It turns out to be Mika, who takes a hit for eight. Kevin's second main phase has Disrupt Decorum then resolving, and all the creatures on the board are goaded, and he passes turn. I draw, and cast a frontline medic, and then an Order of the White Clay. I have to swing the Dire Fleet Ravager, and it goes at Maximus. He takes the four, and I gain the initiative, going to find a basic to hand. I then play it for turn, and pass. Maximus draws, and plays a Drownyard Temple for his land for turn. He asks to look at graveyards, and then goes to combat. He has to attack with everything he can since they're goaded, and he swings the Nihilith at Mika and the rest at me. I double block the Valiant Changeling, and Maximus assigns lethal to the frontline medic. Mika then takes 4 and mills 4 cards, while I drop to 4 and mill 3. He then regains the initiative and ventures into the forge, putting 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters onto the Valiant Changeling. He then pays 6 mana in his post combat main phase, casting Psionic Ritual, which allows him to exile a Disrupt Decorum from Krevin's graveyard and cast it. At the end of turn, Maximus then steals a Butcher of Malakir from my graveyard and we move to Mika's turn. Mika tapped a lot of mana for an Azuri's Predation. He makes 7 beast tokens, and they each fight a different creature and opponent controls. This gets Maximus a few triggers from the Butcher, which Mika resolves by sacrificing some wolf tokens to. He then goes to combat, and swings at me with his entire board, taking me out. Kevin casts a Pursued Whale in his main phase, having each of his opponents create a 1-1 pirate token that forces all of their respective creatures to attack. With nothing else, he passes. Maximus ventures further into the Undercity on his upkeep, hitting a trap, which he has Mika lose 5 life from, and then draws for turn. He then goes to combat, swinging the pirate and kiss at Mika, and his commander at Kevin. Mika blocks to take out both the kiss and the token, and Kevin takes 3 commander damage and mills 3. Maximus' second main phase has him casting a Night Howler, and he follows up with a Phyrexian Revoker, naming Chaos Wand. He then passes to his end step, and gets to steal Kevin's Dragon's Horde that he'd milled earlier that turn. 
Mika draws and plays Vivian Champion of the Wilds in his main phase. He gets a trigger from the bounty and adds 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters to his commander. He then casts Passionate Archaeologist. It's another non-creature spell, and he adds more counters to Faldorn. Moving to combat, he goes at Kevin with Faldorn and the rest at Maximus. Kevin blocks with his whale, and Maximus blocks what he can but still takes 5. Mika then plays a land and gains 3 life from the bounty. And down takes Vivian, exiling a card face down. He then adventures with an Embrace Shieldbreaker, casting Battle Display to destroy the Dragon Horde. Maximus floats a red mana with it, and Mika then adds another 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters from the bounty trigger, this time onto the Pirate Token. Kevin untaps and draws. He brings out Furcrag in his main phase and goes to combat. He goes at Mika, goading Faldorn, and Mika then takes 3 commander damage. This gets Kevin the initiative, and he goes to find a basic to put to hand and then plays it for turn. He then casts a shiny impetus onto the Night Howler and passes to Maximus. Maximus draws for turn and goes to combat. The Night Howler has to go at Mika, while Max's commander goes at Kevin. Kevin gets a treasure from the impetus trigger, and before moving to blocks, Mika flashes out a Grumgully. He gets a wolf token from Faldorn, and a beast token from the bounty. Since Grumbelly was in exile, he also gets to deal 3 damage to Max's face with the Archaeolus trigger that's on his commander. Mika then double blocks the Night Howler, and Kevin takes 3, milling 3. Maximus then moves to his second main phase, and casts Feed the Swarm, targeting the background on Mika's side. It's destroyed, and Maximus loses 2 life. We then see a sludge monster coming in, and he sludges up Grumgully. He passes, and steals Kevin's mocking doppelganger, having it come in as a copy of Furcrag. Kevin also realizes he had a trigger from Furcrag, and adds a plus one plus one counter to the dragon, and draws a card. Mika untaps and draws. He casts an Aurora Phoenix in his main phase, and gets a bounty trigger making a beast token. He then cascades into an Explore, making a wolf token from Faldorn, adding more counters to Grumgully from the bounty trigger, and then casts the spell and draws a card. He plays a Cinder Glade, gaining 3 life from the bounty as it comes in. He then uptakes Vivian to give Faldorn vigilance and reach until his next turn. He swings Faldorn, a beast with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and a wolf at Maximus, and the rest go at Kevin to try and take him out. Maximus blocks the Sludge onto Faldorn, and the Doppelganger onto the big beast token, but still takes 2 while Kevin gets taken out. Mika takes the initiative again, and ventures further into the Undercity, going into the Forge, and putting two plus one plus one counters onto his newly cast Phoenix. He then casts a Dream Pillager, and gets a Beast token from the Bounty Trigger, and passes. Maximus draws, and casts a Fractured Sanity in his main phase, milling Mika for 14 cards. He then plays a Mind Stone, and sacrifices it to draw a card to hopefully save himself. He then passes to his end step, and gets to steal a Battle Mammoth from Mika's graveyard that he'd milled that turn. Mika ventures further into the Undercity, hitting Trap, and making Maximus lose 5 life. He then casts Return of the Wildspeaker, which makes his board massive, and just needs to swing for the win. Game review time. So that was a lot of fun, and I'm always a fan of playing the pre-cons against each other. I think all of these were actually particularly well balanced, despite the fact that it seemed like Faldorn was definitely the big threat for this game. It was incredible to see how many tokens that Miko was gaining over time, and I think he and I are in agreement that Primeval Bounty was an MVP for this game. I didn't even know that Death Kiss was in the deck, but my goodness is that a great card to run in conjunction with Goad. 
It was really cool to see Kevin's deck kind of go off, although unfortunately it seemed like he was only drawing some big cards like that Pursued Whale and Disrupt Decorum. That being said, he was still able to force his opponents to attack each other pretty effectively, although when it mattered, he didn't really have enough creatures to defend himself. I love the use of Changelings in the Party Time deck, as it can really help fill out the roles needed to have Nalia go off. And I think if I'd been able to swing at least earlier on and not get blown up by that fireball, things might have turned out a little bit differently. The Mind Flayerer's deck is pretty sweet, and I like the fact that they're really leaning into the Horror Tribal deck, which works really well with cards like Umbris that have been recently printed. I like the fact that it's milled based on creatures, kind of like Fenax, and not spells, so it makes it a little bit easier to recur some of them since Black does that so well, and really rewards you for attacking, which is not something I typically associate with blue. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.